Hi Weaver leaders, it's Miss Huntley back with our second read aloud. This week's book is by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts, and published by Abrams Books for Young Readers, New York. Now it's just like our last book because I love Andrea Beatty as an author, but this time the title is Rosie Revere, Engineer. I hope you'll listen. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. In Lila Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie sat shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineer's stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooping over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts, a hot dog dispenser and helium pants. His helium pants are making him fly like a balloon. The uncle she loved most was zookeeper Fred. She made him a hat to keep snakes off his head from parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the pythons away. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud, but Fred slapped his knee and he chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed and dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted, oh, I truly do. But Rosie Revere knew that could not be true. She stuck the cheese hat on the back of her shelf and after that day, kept her dreams to herself. Poor Rosie. I bet that didn't make her feel good. And that's how it went until one autumn day, her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great great aunt Rose was a true dynamo who worked building airplanes a long time ago. She told Rosie tales of the things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly. But time never lingers, and long as it seems, I'll chalk that one up to an old lady's dreams. So she's done a lot of amazing things, but she never has flown. That night as Rosie lay wide-eyed in bed, a daring idea crept into her head. Could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese hat and said, no, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight. And this one kept Rosie awake through the night. So when dawn approached and red streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew just how to make her aunt fly. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone and hauled her cheese copter out onto the lawn to give her invention a test just to see the ridiculous flop it might turn out to be. Strapped into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The hella cheese copter sputtered and twitched. It floated a moment and whirled round and round, then froze for a heartbeat and crashed to the ground. Hmm, it didn't work. Then Rosie heard laughter and turned round to see the old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who thought, oh no, never, not again. Will I try to build something to sputter or spin or build with a lever, a switch or a gear and never will I be a great engineer.
So did it work on the first try? No, it sputtered to the ground. She turned round to leave, but then great great aunt Rose grabbed hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close and hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it, hooray. It's the perfect first try. This great flop is over, it's time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed, said dear Rosie, it's just made of trash. Didn't you see the cheese copter crashed? Yes, said her great aunt, it crashed. That is true. But first it did just what it needed to do. Before it crashed, Rosie, before that, it flew. Your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and on to the next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. They worked till the sun sneaked away to its bed. Aunt Rose tied her headscarf around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep with a smile ear to ear and to dream the bold dreams of a great engineer. At Blue River Creek, all the kids in grade two built gizmos and gadgets and doohickeys too. With each perfect failure, they all stand and cheer but none quite as proudly as Rosie Revere. There are a lot of reasons I love this book, but one of them is because it matches my classroom mission statement. Mistakes are proof that you are trying. Rosie learned that the biggest mistake you can make is not trying again. In STEM, we love mistakes because that proves to me that you tried your best and sometimes it doesn't work but we just need to try again. Thanks for listening.